after this practice of solving quiz one remember during the online session some of you were requesting to get more practice and so on and this was my answer that we solve many very good problems during the classes already and if you really understand them then you can solve a lot of the other things yourself on top of that i have sent you the homework so all of you who do the homework themselves you see the problem is you take life easy somebody some friend solves it and you just submit it then you are not really learning anything you are submitting it but the numbers for the all the homeworks together will be very small 1% 2% something like that why do i do that the homework is basically there for you to learn not to copy from somebody and submit it so if you do all the homework problems also yourself then you learn a lot and then in the quizzes and exams you are very strong on top of that then right the examples that we solved during the lectures then the homework problems plus like this that quiz is over now i solved the quiz also with you so like this we will solve enough problems so that you have a good idea but you are not school children of year 3 or year 4 in the school that every time every problem you already know the solution the teacher has done it with you you just reproduce it no you are engineers and you are going to be doing a lot of independent work in the field so we will solve some problems and for some you think and go back to your lectures and see what is the theory so it is not that every problem that comes into the quiz a very similar problem has solved has been solved by me earlier right that will make you very weak engineers so we will see so now let us get back to the lecture the hall pech equation we told you last time sigma y is the yield strength sigma not is a constant k is a constant and small d is the average grain diameter so yield strength yield strength can be found if we find the average grain diameter of the metal by microscopy by looking at it under the microscope right and these values these two values are experimental values they are different for each metal and if we give a problem on this metal then we will give these constants okay so you see this is inversely proportional if this d was here then they are directly proportional so if d is increased yield strength will increase but what would be what did we learn last time that grain boundaries increase the strength of a metal and if the grain size is a small if the material is fine grained grain size is a small then there will be many many more grains in the metal and therefore the amount of grain boundaries will, will be much larger so because grain boundaries increase the strength of the material and because in fine grain size a small grain diameter the grain boundaries are large very many therefore fine grain size increases the strength of the metal this is what we found experimentally practically and here this equation tells you the same thing if d becomes a small if anything you see mathematically if anything in the denominator becomes a small the whole number becomes larger so the smaller the grain size the larger the whole value so yield strength will be higher if grain size goes down right so this is and of course uh, we have told you that a strength a strength and hardness go together so if grain size decreases a strength goes up and hardness also goes up okay here we are showing you some copper uh, normal materials copper titanium mild steel uh, nickel aluminum alloy that what are the values of these constants sigma not and the constant k right so if we give you uh, any problem then if these are the metals then you know the constants and if it is any other metal than this then we will give you the values i have told you that you see i sent you a formula sheet before the quiz i will do that again before every exam and so on by the time we cover the course the formula sheet will be for all the chapters that we have covered so you do not have to memorize any formulas any equations you should know the subject you should understand it and if you are working with me let us do an example here 
the lower yield point for an iron that has an average grain diameter of 5 into 10 s to minus 2 millimeter is 135 megapascal at a grain diameter of 8 into 10 s to minus 3 millimeter the yield point increases to 260 megapascal at what grain diameter will the lower yield point be 205 megapascal please solve it yourself before you try to look at the solution so the solution right what is the hall pitch equation this is the hall pitch equation right so put the first two values you see this is the grains dia so put the grain dia number here and the stress yield strength here so you have one equation right equation one then take this next one this dia and this is strength this dia and this is strength you have equation number two so now you have two equations and two unknowns you have two equations and two unknowns of course what you do here is you have to square right first take the sigma naught there sigma y is some number say it is 25 upon sigma naught and then square it once you square it then the root sign will be gone so from the first equation from the second equation solve them together there are two equations and two constants so if you for, for example this is equation one that is equation two this minus this sigma naught will be, go away and you have only k left there and so on right so put the value there and solve it then you find the sigma naught and the k value then the third time use the same equation but this time you already know sigma naught and you know k and the yield strength is 205 so find the unknown d right so i am not showing you the solution but i am showing you the method so sometimes we can do that so that you understand how to do this but this was i think even before i did the solution if you have practiced it on your page then yes you would understand that there are two unknown constants which we have not given in the question but we have given three different sets of values first we have given an average dia and a yield strength so you put into the equation and you say this is equation one second we have given another average grain dia and the yield strength you put it into the whole patch equation you say it is equation two so now you solve those two equations simultaneously and you find the two unknown constants so now sigma naught and k are known therefore now you can solve for any strength or any dia okay good we now continue with effect of plastic deformation but now effect of plastic deformation on grains on grains not effect of plastic deformation on a strength right so on grains so we have already told you that plastic deformation means dislocations move along a particular slip plane dislocations cannot do, go directly from one grain into the another in a straight line because slip lines change directions at grain boundaries right the dislocation is moving like this when it hits the grain boundary it stops it cannot cross over into the other so it may change shape as the number of grains increases dislocations within each grain can travel a smaller distance before their movement is stopped by the grain boundary therefore higher strength for fine grained materials if fine grained material is there lots of grain boundaries are there it has higher strength so let us see let us see the figure now this is a microscopic figure i told you that we have not done the chapter on crystal structure yet but this is what right if you see this is one grain boundary is there this one is one grain this one is one grain so when materials form when we melt the metal and allowed it to cool it then there will be a small crystal here 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 and as we keep on cooling the small crystal becomes more and more solid it is all liquid it is becoming more and more solid that crystal is also becoming more and more solid this is becoming more and more solid so they all start to grow on all sides and ultimately this one hits this one so this becomes the grain boundary this one hits this one so this becomes the grain boundary this one hits this one so this becomes the grain boundary right so crystals initially the metal is liquid and when we start to solidify it 
small small crystals form at different locations those small crystals are solid they start to grow the solid amount starts to grow and ultimately all these crystals hit each other and these grain boundaries are formed right so this is what is there so if there is any dislocation somewhere if there is any dislocation it can move 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 in this direction until it hits once it hits it it will stop here now it will have to change direction along the grain boundary if it has to move otherwise it will not move so lots of grain boundaries means lots of strength of the metal here they are saying showing exactly that you see this is a grain boundary and there were some dislocations so this is now a much much higher resolution microscope where even dislocations you can see 0.5 micrometer this is no ordinary microscope even a very good microscope normal good microscope very very good microscope which can enlarge to 500 times will not go to micro micrometer level we will study later on that there are special microscopes which can go to this so but if our microscope is this type where very small sizes can be seen then we can see these dislocations so these dislocations are moving but they hit the grain boundary they pile up so dislocation pile up happens and this means that the material is even more stronger than before and if you see 20,000 magnification this x means how much magnification there 20,000 times so normal camera normal photograph this is 20,000 bigger than that therefore you can see very very small things inside we are continuing with effect of plastic deformation on grains one effect is that grain shape changes with plastic deformation now we are not talking of strength what happens to the grain you just saw some grains there so when we do a large plastic deformation then the shape of the grain may change the shape of the grain may change we will show you in the next figure we will show you in the next figure that some shearing of the grains you know that when we apply forces then there are normal forces tensile forces and there are shear forces so if the forces are parallel to the surface we call them shear so some shearing of the grains happens and if we have an operation called rolling then grains elongate their size becomes larger in length along the rolling direction you know i mean you may not have done manufacturing but you know in many places rollers are there uh, and if you put a metal through two rollers which are rolling then the metal will reduce in thickness and will become longer in length so this is a very general method for uh, reducing the thickness and increasing the area so if the operation of rolling is going on then in the direction where they roll length will elongate so this is one change that grain shape changes second change that happens with plastic deformation dislocation arrangement changes dislocation we told you we showed you just in the previous figure that some dislocation is there it starts to move and when it hits a grain boundary it stops so dislocation arrangement has already changed a dislocation a flaw was in some other place it has moved and with more deformation another dislocation moves right so we are showing you in the figure so here we are just saying that there is a metal which has this grain structure and after we put this metal through a roller a roller a round thing here and a round thing here and the metal is rolled through it then you can see that all of these grains are sl slightly longer in shape now all of these grains has elongated a little elongated a little so right so so this is what we are showing you L <coughs> let us show more this is now a huge magnification 30000 magnification this is uh, an a machine called transmission electron microscope very 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 costly but we are showing you uh, a very close up that if this grain was about this size this grain has elongated so for now i am not making you a champion of reading microscopic figures we are just showing you as an example that when we do plastic deformation then the grain shape changes and the dislocation movement or dislocation arrangement changes that what we are just showing you we'll show you more figures don't worry